Bergenworth, a place with so much history. The university looking out across the Moonside Lake, the lecture building long since lost, drifting in the nightmare, and overseeing it all, Master Willem. But it is not just the lore of Bergenworth which features a deep, mysterious history, as the unseen development process of Bloodborne itself also obscures so much of Bergenworth's past. Our time spent at the university is so short-lived, yet every corner of the building suggests there is something that we've not been allowed to see. And beyond this, the lecture building clearly also has some long-lost connection to it all. But it is Master Willem, the university professor himself, upon whose history we will focus today. And to begin, as is so often the case, we need to pay a visit to the Bloodborne Alpha Test. Unfortunately, here in the Alpha version, we are not able to travel to Bergenworth ourselves, instead being trapped in central Yharnam. But we can look below the surface, by taking a look through the list of every item that existed in Bloodborne during this earlier time in development, we can see a collection of fresh livers. Items that were once planned to be dropped by boss characters. This particular one being called Fresh Liver of Mikolash's Husk. The word used for husk here is analogous to the skin that would be left behind by a shedding insect. The description of the item reads, Soul of the University Professor. So through this it is made clear that the University Professor, Master Willem, was not just a boss fight at one point, but also that he was a character whose teachings had been cast off and left behind by Mikolash, more so than Lawrence, as it would be in the final game. How can we further prove that he was indeed a character we would fight? Using the debug menu, we can bring up the NPC parameters for Master Willem, the university professor, and see the most telling evidence. His team type is set to 23. Team 23 is described in the developer documentation as being enemy. Immediately below the professor's parameters, we also see another NPC one called the University Professor's Bit. We'll speak more about that in just a moment, but for now, let's return to the retail version of Bloodborne and pay a visit to Master Willem. Now, I've said in the past that unfortunately the debug menu does not exist in the retail version of Bloodborne, but as I also say at the end of every video, I'm always working on making new discoveries. And thankfully now, I'm able to show you that I have restored the debug menu here in the final product. Using this, we can take a look at the University Professor's NPC parameters and how they differ here in the retail version. The key difference being that his team type is now set to 26, a number described in the developer documentation as Friendly NPC. Because of this, he cannot be targeted like a normal enemy or boss, and we can simply speak to him. So here, of course, Master Willem has nothing to say to us, and is certainly far from being an enemy encounter. He simply urges us towards the Moonside Lake, where the story continues on without him. However, Master Willem was once indeed planned to actually speak to the player upon this first meeting, and I've gone ahead and taken the time to patch that content back into the game. Let's see how this meeting plays out now. Please, please, where are the eyes? I need more. I can't see. Fetch me eyes. Hold faster, somebody. Oh, be they round, be they young. Fetch me eyes for my brain. More eyes. I need more. It's difficult to imagine what exactly would have been expected of the player with regard to actual gameplay after hearing this request from Master Willem. But after we satisfied whatever condition he wished of us, he would have then had this to say upon our next encounter. Oh, 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 there you are, finally. You are most 
welcome my precious sacrifice. Now, now, over here. Quick, go on, give me your eyes. Yes, yes, a pleasure to have you. At this point, it seems as if Master Willem is suggesting that he expects the player character to submit, and perhaps this is the moment that his planned boss encounter would have once begun. To see Master Willem's boss form is in fact quite simple. Now, with access to the debug menu, all we need to do is change his team type from 26 back to 23, as it was in the alpha version, and then simply reload the area. What happens next, I feel, speaks for itself. Master Willem was indeed once a boss encounter, which took place somewhere in Bergenworth. Of course, what we see here is the remains of a mostly broken encounter, but he is able to perform many attacks and can easily defeat the player character. All of the visual effects are missing, but he has some strange medium range attack where he slams his staff down, and of course this absurd chair slam. Other than his continuous babbling throughout the fight, he also has an attack where he seems to be charging up his staff before firing a continuous burst, pushing the player backwards throughout. <laughs> And so we saw that there was another NPC in the alpha version, one called University Professor's Bit. The term Bit is one that is used elsewhere in Bloodborne. For example, we have this star flower here, and it summons an asteroid projectile to attack the player character. This asteroid is actually an NPC, one called Starflower's Bit. This creates a precedent of the word bit being used to describe smaller NPCs that would be summoned to join in a fight. And in the case of the university professor's bit, I am able to show you what it looks like by loading it up in the game engine's model viewer. So it is in fact a large eyeball which floats around. It has a few attack animations, and it can be hurt and defeated. Unfortunately, if we load one of these into the game, very little happens and it just sinks into the ground, eventually causing the whole console to crash. There's no way to be sure how exactly these would have been incorporated into the fight with the university professor, but placed next to him here in the model viewer, we can at least have some fun with our imagination. And in the end, I think that's all there is to say about what remains of the boss encounter with Master Willem. A lot of room is left for speculation with regard to what we still don't know, but I hope I was at least able to show you something interesting throughout. 
However, I think we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room at this point, as I'm sure people by now would be furious if I didn't show what's beneath the Bergenworth trapdoor. So let's finally take a look thanks to some rewiring of the game's logic. While it's true that the trapdoor does have an entirely unused opening animation, there is sadly nothing left underneath. And I say nothing left because there was once indeed an incredibly bizarre connection between the university and the lecture building, so much of which does still remain in some form buried in the game's files, but we'll have to talk about that some other time. For now, I hope you enjoyed seeing the things I was able to show you today. It always takes a lot of effort to reassemble and make sense of the things you see here, so I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you did manage to enjoy the video, feel free to let me know by hitting the like button, or maybe even leaving a friendly comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with new videos, and you can find more ways to follow and support my work in the description. Either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.